Boy, those famous carnivore videos take quite a while to make. Hopefully I can just take it easy for this next video and just do a simple herbivore or something. Let's see, what's next on the docket? Alright, uh, oh, a bonus video! That's fu- Oh. Welcome, my beautiful people, to another episode of Dino Basics, where we dig up the basics on some of our favorite deceased beasts. My name is Logan, and today, in celebration of hitting 1,000 subscribers, like two weeks ago, but that's not important, we look into the renowned raptor of Hollywood. By your request, we'll explore the basics on the famed Velociraptor. The earliest remains of Velociraptor date back to 1923 in the Asian Gobi Desert, specifically an area referred to as the Bay and Zac by locals or Flaming Cliffs for Westerners in the modern country of Mongolia. This original fossil was discovered by American paleontologist Peter Kaizen and consisted of a nearly complete skull and a variety of other small bones, including a second toe claw. These remains would be sent back to the American Museum of Natural History, where its president, Henry F. Osborne, would designate this fossil to a new genus and species, referred to as Velociraptor mongoliensis. Over the following years, due to rising tensions between the United States and Russia, at this time referred to as the USSR, American expeditions in the area would be completely halted as Mongolia was under communist influence during this era. During this time, Polish and Soviet teams would recover a number of Velociraptor fossils, including the famed Fighting Dinosaur specimen, which is now considered a national treasure for the country. This unique fossil, featuring a Velociraptor locked in combat with the small Ceratopsian Protoceratops, is one of the only examples in fossil records of dinosaur predation in action, something we obviously assumed, but is pretty cool to see in bone form. As tensions cooled between the East and the West, other countries like Canada, China, Japan, and once again the United States would send expeditions into the region to discover additional specimens of Velociraptor. The name Velociraptor stems from Latin and includes the words veloci, translating to swift, as well as raptor, translating to robber or plunderer, having the name directly translate to swift robber. This name references its believed hunting style, using its agility and mobility to steal prey from other predators or swipe eggs from nests for a high-protein meal. The species name Mongoliensis obviously references the country of origin, Mongolia. Other species have been proposed over time, one of the more widely recognized being Osmoloske in 2008. But ultimately, Mongoliensis is the only species to still be recognized today. Velociraptor is a Cerician theropod, and more specifically a member of the famed Dromaeosauridae. The Dromaeosaurs, often referred to as raptors, but not to be confused with modern avian raptors, including hawks and eagles, were a group of small to medium-sized carnivores most common throughout the Cretaceous period, almost 70 million years ago, but the group possibly dates back to the Middle Jurassic. The family was extremely widespread, possibly inhabiting every continent besides Antarctica, and possibly Australia, although the jury is still out on that one. Their slender bodies, long tails, and sharp claws make them some of the most agile and deadly carnivores of their time. Their relation to birds has also been a defining characteristic of the group sometimes considered the closest dinosaur relatives to our modern feathered friends. Some more widely recognized members include the Deinonychus, Utah Raptor, and previous Dinobasic century, Pyroraptor. Now, I usually save this sort of thing for the end, but it's kind of unavoidable in the case of Velociraptor. 
Most likely, the only reason you know a Velociraptor today is due to the prestige it earned as the most featured dinosaur in the 1993 film Jurassic Park, as well as almost every other piece of Jurassic Park media. This film took Velociraptor from an unknown Asian dromaeosaur to possibly the most widely known and recognized dinosaur today. But is what people recognize truly Velociraptor? No. While certain characteristics would be quite accurate, including their general body shape and somewhat above average intelligence, other changes would have Velociraptor appear quite different than its real life counterpart. The first, and arguably most significant, is size. The movie and book Velociraptors stood almost 6 feet or 2 meters tall, about the same height as an average human. This stands in stark contrast to the true Velociraptor, which would only measure about 1.5 feet or half a meter tall at the hip. Why such a drastic difference would occur between movie and real life is somewhat unknown. Some propose it was an urging by movie director Steven Spielberg to make filming action scenes easier with full body suits or animatronics. Others propose it was the influence of author Gregory S. Paul, who claimed the larger species, Deinonychus, was actually a member of the Lociraptor genus, providing a larger species to base the size off of. Or perhaps it is just a bit of writing liberty to have an intimidating threat with a cool name. Who knows? Another key detail missing from the movie was the inclusion of feathers on Velociraptor. We'll get more into this feathery feature in a moment, but this detail isn't necessarily Crichton's or Spielberg's fault. While feathered dinosaurs was a prevalent belief in 1993, Velociraptor would not be proven to have feathers until 2007, so the inclusion of feathers in Jurassic Park would be especially speculative almost as much as an acid-spitting, frill-having Dilophosaurus. Almost. As previously mentioned, Velociraptor was actually quite a small dinosaur, even among dromaeosaurs. Estimates believe it would only measure about 5.5 feet, or 2 meters in length, and stand about 2 feet, or about half a meter tall. It likely would have weighed a minuscule 40 pounds, or 18 kilograms in total. Its jaws were fairly long and narrow, measuring about 9 inches or 20 centimeters long. These jaws would have been lined with dozens of small yet sharp teeth, slightly curved backwards to increase grip strength. Brain scans done on Velociraptor skulls have provided us with additional insights into how this creature would have hunted and lived. Projections indicate Velociraptor had excellent senses, including sight, smell, and hearing, helping them effectively survey their environment to find and ambush prey. Velociraptors in general were actually quite intelligent, believed to have had one of the largest brains proportional to their bodies. But it is important to separate brain size from intelligence, as scientists believe Velociraptor's intelligence probably would have been on par to an average bird, like a robin or a hawk, but not up to the level of more intelligent animals like chimps or even parrots. So, their ability to learn the complexities of push knobs may be up for debate. Their skulls would have been supported by a long, flexible neck, positioned at the front of their compact bodies. This body would end in a long tail, providing excellent agility to make quick turns while chasing prey. Aiding in this agility were their powerful hind limbs, which, while thin, could help this creature reach speeds of up to 25 miles per hour. These legs would end in three-toed feet, all ending in a claw. And in the case of the third toe, a long, sickle-shaped claw. This claw has become an iconic feature of dromaeosaurs, but its exact use is not well understood. Early interpretations believe this claw would be used as a slashing weapon to cut into the body of prey and possibly disembowel them. 
But a 2005 study done by the BBC documentary, The Truth About Killer Dinosaurs, seemed to disprove this belief, showing this claw would be incapable of gutting a pig carcass, which would likely be easier to cut than the tough hides of many dinosaurs. More modern interpretations believe this claw could be used to pierce rather than slash, used to damage specific vital organs or puncture crucial veins and cut off blood circulation. Another popular theory, suggested by paleontologist Denver Fowler, believes this claw would be ideal to pin down prey, holding them in place to bleed out or allow Velociraptor to use its narrow jaws to tear apart their targets, similar to modern hawks. Isn't nature delightful? The arms of Velociraptor were also built to kill, constructed in a similar arrangement to the wings of modern birds, while ending in three-fingered hands and armed with vicious claws. These arms were also significant for being the location of known feathers for Velociraptor. As previously mentioned, a 2007 study written by Alan H. Turner and his team identified quill knobs on an arm bone of a Velociraptor fossil, providing clear evidence that Velociraptor would sport some amount of feathers. While no evidence of feathers has been noted on other parts of the creature, it is believed feathers would also cover parts of the body, neck, tail, and legs. Due to the size and shape of Velociraptor, it is unlikely these feathers would be used for flight. Instead, scientists have proposed that these feathers would be used for keeping themselves and their eggs warm, as a form of display to attract mates or intimidate rivals, or possibly to provide thrust while running. Velociraptor would have lived during the late Cretaceous period, nearly 70 million years ago. It likely would have lived throughout Central Asia, particularly parts of northern China and throughout Mongolia. During this time, the environment was actually quite similar to modern Mongolia, being a fairly arid and hot environment broken up by patches of lush forests. It would also endure harsh temperatures with intense heat during the summer and bitter cold over the winter. Previous Dinobasics entry Tarbosaurus was most likely the apex predator of the time, but due to Velociraptor's excellent mobility and smaller size, it is unlikely the two would directly compete. Instead, Velociraptor would favor small prey items, including rodent-like mammals, lizards, and small pterosaurs. In a pack, it is possible Velociraptor would try to hunt larger dinosaurs, like the previously mentioned Protoceratops, as well as the thick-headed Prenocephaly. Although there is little evidence of pack behavior for Velociraptor, and some even object to this theory altogether, due to an analysis of Deinonychus teeth showing young would change diets as they age, a rare behavior among pack animals. I don't think it's crazy to say that Velociraptor is possibly the most famous carnivorous dinosaur besides Tyrannosaurus rex. This prestige, whether it be the accurate real-world animal or the Jurassic Park offshoot, has earned this creature an insane amount of pop culture appearances. So many, I don't feel like reading them off. I'm just gonna let them scroll while I get some more water. Be right back. All right, so, nope, still going. I guess I'll grab a, grab a snack too, all right. All right? All right. While its shape and size is rarely consistent across media, what this creature embodies has remained the same. Velociraptor is a cunning, specialized hunter, uniquely evolved to efficiently and effortlessly devastate their opponents. Feathers or not, 
a few meters or just one, it is not hard to understand why so many fell in love with Velociraptor. That's good to do for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave a comment below what you think of Velociraptor, and if you've heard of this dinosaur before the video. To be honest, I was hoping for Triceratops to win, but I can't say that I'm surprised Velociraptor won. It's not like I'm disappointed either. This is certainly one of the most interesting dinosaurs, certainly in its relation to its pop culture relevance. This Friday, we're finishing off the Packy Trifecta as we look into the basics of the spike-headed Stygimolloch. Thank you for your support, and see you in the next video.